Hello, in today's recording of the Epoch video series, we want to look at Epoch Periodic Iterate, a very powerful procedure that allows you to batch update operations on your graph. <laughs> As you might know, uh, Neo4j is a transactional database, which means each operation is bounded by, by a transaction. And these transactions make sure that your updates are independent of each other, they are consistent, they are durable and isolated. So when one thread updates the database, the other threads don't see these updates until this thread's transaction is complete. Which also means that uh, the data uh, that's being updated has to be uh, kept in, in memory until the commit happens, when it actually syncs to disk, to the write ahead log and to the database. So uh, each of these operations, especially if they get large, uh, can consume a considerable amount of uh, memory. So um, to accommodate it for that, um, we can use Epoch Period Iterate to take a large operation that updates like millions of nodes and chunk it into small, um, small operations, which are then each of them uh, committed individually and can even run, be run in parallel. So let's have a look at how this uh, looks like. Um, we can see that Epoch Periodic Iterate is one of the many operations in the periodic um, package. Uh, the other ones are more concerned with um, scheduled operation, which we'll look at at a later uh, stage. And um, a periodic iterate is here. And basically what it does, it takes a uh, two statements, two surface statements and a bit of configuration. So if you look at this, um, it basically uh, looks like this. So our first statement provides the data to be operated on. So these can be either uh, literal scalar values, like in this case, this is just a range from 1 to 1 million, uh, basically returned as individual rows, but it can also be nodes or relationships or properties or maps or rows of a CSV file or uh, rows of a relational database or other database. So whatever you choose to return from the, the first statement is, is kind of the input that's been worked on uh, in the second one. And the second statement is basically doing the work, so it contains the update operations, and that then uh, update the graph, uh, uh, change the graph, or uh, remove things, and, uh, and so on. So in our case, we create one million IDs here. And for each of these IDs, uh, they are passed uh, transparently into the second statement. Uh, we actually uh, take this thing as a parameter, but we automatically prefix the second query so you can access these uh, things without dollar signs. And then we can do something with them. So for instance, in this case, we want to create one million people. And uh, we just do create person ID uh, for ID. And we say our batch size is 10,000, so each transaction has one uh, 10,000 um, elements. And it would list uh, true means this uh, batch is actually executed as a single cipher transaction, uh, operation. So it again uses unwind internally to, to do that, which is more efficient than running 10,000 cipher statements, each one creating one person basically. And parallel true, um, we can run this even in parallel because these uh, people are independent, which is also true for, for instance, property updates or deletion of nodes without relationships. Uh, as soon as relationships are involved, um, you have to be a bit careful. Um, basically, you can run your, in, um, your updates in parallel when the um, each kind of item that comes out of here or each batch that comes out of here is in a diff different subgraph. So you would, for instance, group something by clusters that you uh, identified before with um, a clustering mechanism, for instance. Okay, cool. Let's let's run this and see what's happening. Um, so we create one million uh, nodes which we then can also uh, see. So it takes uh, 12 seconds. So this varies a little bit on load. So now the recording uh, takes one CPU, I think. Uh, it used to be five seconds before. Um, so if you try it on your own machine, it depends on the number of CPUs you have available. On a large machine, this goes down to, um, to two seconds or something like that. So if you check, we have now uh, 10 million nodes in our database. 
Okay, cool. Um, what can we do uh, with this? So, of course, we would want to refactor our database. So, we, for instance, we want to find all our nodes. Uh, and what we actually want to do, we want to add an age property that's based on the ID. So, basically, uh, we just uh, take this person and set the age property uh, to uh, ID modulo 100, so it's kind of people are between 0 and 99 years old, and um, we do this for one or one million nodes. Just a uh, slight um, thing to uh, watch out for. So the first statement uh, here in this case would actually use the compiled runtime uh, in the FHA, but this materializes its results uh, when you access them from the Java API in, in memory um, as a list. Um, so what we do is we just tell Cypher to use the runtime, um, the slotted runtime, which doesn't do that. Uh, right, slotted. So this is something I still need to fix in APOC that to do this automatically, or handle the results differently. And then we set these ages, and we can run it in parallel again because this is uh, again node based. Okay. So you see it goes really quickly, and now all our people have an age property. Oh no, sorry. Um, it actually errored, so you see it got, got 100 error messages here. Uh, so, uh, because I forgot to put in uh, P as, uh, uh, sorry, N as, as um, element, so you also see that you get uh, some error information if it fails with, uh, with everything. Uh, something else that's interesting is that uh, you're getting uh, passed in uh, a batch variable and a count variable, which is helpful to um, if you want to do something with this batch information, which batch you're currently running into. Okay, let's run this again. So it takes a little bit more time. And um, we can also run a query over the database to see. So it did uh, take 16 seconds to update these 1 million properties. And uh, then we can see what's our age property. It's from 0 to 99, and 49.5 is the average. Cool. And um, of course, you can use this also with, with other data. So for instance, if you had a CSV file, you could change uh, this statement, for instance, to load uh, CSV with headers from URL. So you can also pass in params here. Params, for instance, URL is something. Uh, return, oh. Uh, as row, return row. And then you can batch this uh, update from the CSV file. So you can take each row and create data, update data, and so on. The, the nice thing here is um, uh, that it basically replaces periodic commit and allows you to uh, do um, operations even if you usually would get into this ego problem where it loads all the data first and then um, kind of consumes too much memory. So you can, it really, it's kind of hard uh, split into 10,000 size. Um, elements here and uh, will not exceed that. So even if it goes eager in the, in the second statement, um, so for instance, if you merge on person twice or something like that, then it will uh, still, it still run in, in uh, reasonable time. So merge from nose to. So uh, if you do something like this, so I don't have a CSV file right now, but um, if you do something like that, then we can actually launch run this in parallel. Um, and then we can actually uh, call this operation without it uh, running into memory issues. And the same is true for load JDPC, load JSON, load XML, and so on. Um, 
there is one more thing that I wanted to mention, which is uh, when you delete data. So let's delete our one million nodes. Just for one time, let's hold it. Match and return n. So in our case, it's uh, only delete. Uh, usually, you would do detach delete. Uh, so something to, you have to watch out for is that basically the number of updates that the transaction can, needs to hold is not just deleting the node, but also deleting all the relationships. So depending on your degree of the nodes, uh, you want to reduce the batch size uh, because potentially if your node has a thousand relationships, it's not just one update, but basically 1001 updates that it has to do because it has to delete all the thousand relationships and the thousand one node. So if you say batch size uh, 100, then it's actually 100,000 as batch size in this case, right? And um, uh, so in this case, it's better to reduce the batch size uh, if you do detach delete, just as a, as a hint. So and if you run this now, it should um, delete our million nodes, basically, from your database. So this took 34 seconds, which is also uh, longer due to the recording uh, time. So now our database should be empty again. And with that, uh, I want to leave you. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, please visit the APOC repository, which also contains the help, which also contains examples for this uh, loading CSV and then doing periodic iterate with the data. Uh, if you have a question, come to our Slack channel and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates on this. Thanks for watching.